Well, repair actually seems to be good. Back on road, no issues, so yay on this episode of The Clutch Trucker Channel. Clutch Trucker filmed before a live and fuzzy studio audience. Yep, that's Rusty, the world famous meatball dog. Hey YouTube, Clutch Trucker here. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker Channel. All right, well, it is uh, April 1st, Saturday. I left Lusk about 30 minutes ago. Uh, the truck kept building air all night. Sad Brothers guy was there. That was in the end of my last video. Uh, it seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. So all I can figure is uh, he replaced, you know, a good section of airline on the signal airline, and maybe we had a bad little piece because there were four separate little pieces with four different disconnects in there or quick connects. He took all that out and put it down to just a couple of pieces. For all we know, it could have been, you know, an older piece that had a hairline fracture in it we couldn't see. It had been crushed at one point or something. But uh, all seems to be doing well right now. I've been, say, been driving for a half hour. What was concerning me is while I was parked the whole time overnight, uh, I was never hearing it purge like it normally does even when you're sitting and idling. Uh, I tried running the APU, it wouldn't start for me, so I had to run the engine most of the night today. But uh, the air always stayed up. And now that I'm rolling, it's been, I've been watching the air uh, gauges like a hawk, believe me. And uh, it's been doing what it's supposed to do. It gets up to just over 120. I've actually, I hear it purge. I see it slowly get back down. And then when it builds back up, back up to 120-ish again, it purges and does what it's supposed to. So for all we knew, everything was correct. It's just there might have been a little bad piece of airline or a little clog in one of them or something that got shaken out while driving after getting fixed initially, I don't know. Hard to say, but all I can do is, you know, say right now, everything seems to be well. And uh, again, I, I really thank Sap Brothers for sending a guy all the way up to Lusk, a two hour drive from Cheyenne, to try to help me out. Uh, and they ate that, so I had to eat the tow, tow bill, which really sucked, $1,200, to get towed 23 miles to Lusk. And they managed to bend my bumper, which I didn't notice until today. So I'm going to be making a claim against them for that. The tow driver didn't bother to tell me last night that he bent that. Maybe he didn't notice. I don't know. But we're going to be making a claim on that. Because if I have to pay 1200 bucks to get towed 23 miles <clears throat> and you bent my bumper, you're going to pay to fix the bumper. What do you think? So... Yeah, here it is, uh, what, 7 o'clock mountain time on Saturday night. All seems to be doing well so far. I'm going to try to make it all the way into Wisconsin and drive all night. I just heard it purge again. So, see, it's... Uh, I was a little reluctant when I left, going, I hope I don't break down again. But, you know, we got so many other things fixed at Sam Brothers on Thursday. And maybe everything is finally solved. And hopefully I won't be spending a lot of money for a little while, except for like oil changes and stuff, but that's, you can, you can handle that. So we're heading north on Highway 20, or no, Highway 18 here in Wyoming, about to uh, cross into um, South Dakota. We're going to go through Hot Springs. I'll stop at the TA Express there. I'm going to scale, see how much fuel I can add on, yada, yada, yada. So... At least for now all is well I'll continue this video by tomorrow morning hopefully we'll be in Wisconsin oh and I got to show you this real quick I used to drive coal miners to work in Wyoming years ago when I still had my radio station in Douglas Wyoming uh, before I became a truck driver and uh, I would hit on average three to five deers a week driving those buses uh, because deer are stupid uh, and here's some proof because antelope were smart just as many antelope, if not more, out there than you see deer. But antelope, when they see a vehicle coming, will turn the other way. Look! Deer, however, will uh, not. They'll cut, They'll just look at you. That's where the deer in the headlights thing comes from. And I found years ago the best way to avoid hitting a deer is aim for them. 
because they always love to switch direction right before you get to them. So if you're trying to swerve away from them, they'll switch direction into you. If you aim for them, they'll probably switch direction away from you. What do you think? Well, yeah, so we made it all the way up here to Shakopee, Minnesota, just on the south uh, west side of the whole Minneapolis St. Paul area. I was trying to make it into Wisconsin, but I was battling wind all night long during the drive. Uh, my fuel economy went in the toilet because I was still trying to make good time across South Dakota. I was running about 78 miles an hour, most of the time along I-90. Uh, it's, you know, an 80 mile an hour speed limit, so I wasn't speeding or anything. But uh, I was watching those air gauges right down there like a hawk. Uh, but the uh, it kept doing what it was supposed to do, purging just around over 120. It would drop down around 105, it would go back up. So it seems like whatever Steven, who came back from Sap Brothers on Saturday night, did, completely fixed everything. All I can figure is when they changed out that uh, unloader valve on Thursday at Sap Brothers, they said the other one was really gunked up and that's why it had stuck. Well, gunk could have gone through the whole system and hit the air dryer and uh, clogged something there. Plus there's the signal line that goes back from the air dryer and the uh, governor back to the compressor which then um, you know tells it to turn on or off and that could have been an issue there were four splices in that signal line uh, because that hangs right down there at the bottom and it's had to be fixed a few times I know I fixed it once it's been fixed a couple other times by other people and that's one thing Steven did when he came up Saturday night he replaced a lot of these junctions and just put a longer piece in. he had some of the airline with him and I think all of that combined fixed my issue and that you know so whatever the reason was I wouldn't build air on Friday after I picked up my load in Glen Rock Wyoming and got stuck there on the highway between Lusk and Douglas well at least uh, that's been repaired and I drove damn near 700 miles overnight and like I say watching those uh, gauges like a hawk but uh, it all seems to be well so I, I think I can safely say we're completely fixed thank the Lord baby yeah so Again, why I always love Sap Brothers and Cheyenne. They do me right. They've done me right for years. And if you ever break down around Cheyenne, Wyoming, I would highly recommend going to Sap Brothers. Do not go to Floyd's Freightliner. They'll just steal your money and keep throwing parts at the things and, and not really fix your issue. So it's nice to have a good hometown shop like that you can trust. I was talking to the service um, uh, manager who I'd actually never met before, uh, you know, yesterday and and everything and you know they stand behind it so what else more could you ask for right I did uh, talk to John Hallgren last night one of my uh, longtime subscribers helped me through the whole remodel thing uh, and he was saying well I didn't make it too clear because I said I spent you know over six thousand dollars which I did on repairs but a lot of that was on the tires uh, really the the repair on the uh, uh, compressor issue that unloading valve Sap Brothers really only charged me about $250 for that part. Most of the uh, expense was the, was the tires. Uh, about $3,800 for the tires, plus then mounting, balancing, uh, and all that install uh, that I had to pay for, you know, dismounting and remounting the tires that I moved from my drive axle to the trailer. I put on new shocks. I put on new drums. I put on new... Um, uh, what else? Oh, brakes on the front drive axle. So I put on uh, new drum, uh, new brakes on the front drive axle. Sap Brothers had those. The drums they did not have. I had to get those from Floyd's Freightliner. Had to send my wife over to get those. If I bought them from Floyd's, it was cheaper than Sap Brothers buying them and then charging me the upcharge. Um, and the shocks. I got new shocks all around the truck. Uh, again, if Sap Brothers had got them from Floyd's, it would have been twice as much. So again, I sent my wife over there to get the shocks, so we saved some money that way. Uh, so, but still, I uh, probably spent about oh eight hundred dollars or more with Freightliner, and then fifty six hundred with Sap Brothers. So that's uh, sixty four hundred dollars. Then I had to pay that twelve hundred dollar tow bill. So we're at what seventy six hundred dollars or something. But actually, the repair on the on the air compressor, that unloading valve, was the cheapest part. And that's what broke me down, unfortunately. Uh, but Sap Brothers made that good by sending the guy up, Steven, on uh, Saturday night to help resolve that issue. And I think I can safely say 
it's resolved. So that's why we've changed the uh, clutch trucker lights to green, because green is good to go. Uh, all right, so here I am in Shakopee, Minnesota, at this little holiday store. It has uh, about 20 truck parking spots. you got to pay to park here. But, you know, sometimes I don't mind that, because that keeps the riffraff out. I don't have to worry about somebody taking my hood off all night. Uh, so here it is, uh, Sunday morning, about 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, I'm going to have to leave here about 3 a.m. tomorrow morning to drive the last few hours to get to my delivery there in Wisconsin in Rothschild. I'll uh, deliver there. I pick up another load in the same town that goes to Burlington, Iowa for a delivery on Tuesday morning. Then I pick up in Burlington Tuesday afternoon a load that runs down to Los Lunas, New Mexico, which is just south of Albuquerque, to a Walmart distribution center. And I'll be delivering that on Thursday, April 6th. That's my birthday. So I'm going to be spending my birthday sitting in a Walmart distribution center. Oh, oh well. You know, got to take care of the family and make the money. And so, you know, if that's the way I got to spend my birthday, then so be it. All right, so here we are in Shakopee, uh, Minnesota. And uh, look at all the snow right around here. <laughs> When I talked to John Holgren last night, he suggested that I uh, show on the map on uh, my GPS, do some screenshots of where I'm going, yada, yada, yada. So let's look at that. All right, so here you can see I'm right up here on the south uh, west side of Minneapolis, St. Paul. I got to drive across there to deliver in Rothschild uh, tomorrow morning. I pick up also in that same town, and then I can drive down this way, and I'm going to deliver in Burlington. Uh, well, actually, that's showing me stopping at the Loves, short of that. Okay, so this shows where I deliver, uh, there's the Loves. Deliver in Burlington, pick up there. Probably gonna go to Cameron, Missouri, right there uh, for Tuesday night. Uh, and then I'm gonna make my way down to Los Lunas, which is just south of Albuquerque. Well, yeah, just a quick update to let you know, yeah, at least uh, the repair that Sap Brothers did on uh, Saturday night uh, by sending the guy back up, they had to eat all that. Two hours up, two hours back, plus more than an hour for the guy to fix stuff. And this is why I go to Sap Brothers, I tell you. Because they stand behind their stuff. Right, Rusty? They got us back on the road, baby. Now, I had to eat the $1,200 tow bill. And, uh, yeah, they bent my bumper. So I'm going to try to make a claim against that. You know, hopefully the guy will stand up and be good about it and say, yeah and uh, reimburse me for that, but you know, it's gonna be hard to prove. So I won't be surprised if they basically tell me to go, what are you gonna do? But at least we're back on the road. We'll still make my delivery on Monday. So broker will be happy and I can continue to run and all that. So again, thanks to Sap Brothers. I really like those guys. They didn't have to send somebody up for free to try to fix the problem, but uh, they did, so. There you go. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe. Please like and comment. Get to your comments as soon as I can. Sometimes takes a few days because I'm a working truck driver. Clutch Trucker on Instagram. Clutch Trucker on Twitter. And as always, sniff that magic YouTube fairy dust. Clutch and Rusty, out. Come, sir. We must get you to your ship. We are men of consequence. Lies do not befit us. Oh, well said, sir. Oh, you have six fingers on your right hand. I know somebody who was looking for you. All right, Rusty, come down here. You know, we always start down here. Oh, there it goes. It's on your pet bed. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. He's a happy dog. Oh, yes, happy dog eating that bacon strip. Oh, yes, Rusty. All right, these are just the regular cut. We were used to the thick cut that Junior sent us before. Connie sent us two boxes full I think each box had at least two of the giant bags of the begging strips right up there. So we're going to be enjoying these for a while. I haven't had to buy begging strips for like a year and a half. Thanks to Connie and Junior and all my subscribers. Thank you guys so much for keeping Rusty in his begging strips. It makes him a happy dog, which makes me a happy dad, right? There you go. All right. All right, did you already get that one? Well, you're quick on those thinner ones, aren't you? All over them, baby. Oh, I see a crumb down there. Gotta get that.